Hey guys, welcome back to Codrome. In this video, we're going to start expanding our schema and also implementing chats and messages in the application. So first things first, let's take a quick look at the sketch that I've drawn out for the schema of the application. First of all, we're going to have several entities in the app. We're going to have the user entity, the chat entity, as well as the message. So the user is going to be sort of like the root model. The user can have multiple chats or belong to multiple chats. They're going to be able to create those chats and also join them if they already exist. And the chats might also have multiple users that belong to them. So this relationship is going to be many to many. So the user is going to belong to a chat or multiple chats and every chat will have multiple messages. So the messages object or entity is going to be directly related to the chat. Every chat will have multiple message and the message can only belong to a single chat. So it's going to be one to many relationship. Now taking a closer look at the user model, we already have most of the fields. So we have things like ID, which is going to be the object ID. We have the name, the email, username, and password. And we also have the timestamps, of course. The only field we're going to add is going to be the chats. Now this one is going to be an array of object IDs. So this array of object IDs is going to indicate which chats the user belongs to or participates in. As far as the chat itself, we're going to have a model that obviously has an ID property. We'll have the title of the chat. We'll have also a list of users that that chat has as participants. And this one will also be an array of object IDs and they will link back to the user model. And we'll also have the last message property. In this case, it's going to be an object ID and this will link back to a message. So this way we won't have to query all the messages and order them by created at field. We can simply get the last message off of the chat object. So it's going to be faster that way. And we'll also of course have the created at and updated at fields. Now, as far as the message goes, this is going to be an entity with an ID. Also, of course, the body of the message we will also have a sender property. So this will be the user who sent the message. Once again, it's not going to be an actual user object, of course, because it's going to be shared between multiple entities. For example, that same object ID could also be part of the user's property on the chat. That's why this will be an ID, an object ID, not the actual object of the user. But this will in the end link back to the user model. And in the end, of course, we're going to have the created at and updated at time steps. So let's begin by actually fleshing out the type definitions for all of these models. So we're going to create one for a chat. So let's do chat.js. So in this file, we're going to be importing GQL from Apollo Server Express. We'll export default GQL. So we're going to declare a type of chat. Now this one will have an ID. It'll also have a title as a required property. It will also have a list of users. Now in the database, this will be a list of object IDs, but in this case, in the schema, we're gonna expect actual user objects. So we're gonna have to populate those. We're gonna also have a list of messages. So let's have a message type. Of course, we're gonna have to create it. We're gonna do that in a second. So let's see what else. The title, the users, the messages. We're gonna also have the last message. This one is going to be a message, but in this case, I'm not going to put the exclamation because a fresh chat won't have any messages in it, but we will have a created at and also updated at field. So now both of these are going to be strings. So next up, we're going to create a new file. Let's call it message.js. So this is where we're going to define the message type. So let's have a type of message. Once again, we'll have an ID property. We'll have body. This will be a string. We're going to have a sender, which will be the user who sent the message. Now back in the schema, besides the sender, we're going to also have a chat property, which I forgot to mention for some reason, but this will be an object ID and this will link back to the chat. Now looking back at the chat, if we were to have a messages property on the schema, so let's say we go back in here, just like we have the users. Let's say we were also to have a messages property and this would be, let's say an array of object IDs and this would link back to messages. So if we were to go with this design, this would not be scalable in the future because first of all, we have to be mindful of the fact that every document in MongoDB has a limit of 16 megabytes. So if this property was to grow beyond the available size for a document, we are going to run into issues because now we won't be able to push in any more messages to the chat. So we would have to either delete them or probably ask the user to create a new chat or something like that. So this is really not scalable. And this also complicates things because every time a new message is created, we're going to have to push the new message to that array. And if the message is deleted, we're going to have to pull 
the ID from the array. So this actually complicates the code quite a bit if you think about it. So instead of having a messages property on the chat, what we can do is we can instead create a chat property on the message. So we're gonna have a chat property, which will be an object ID, and this will link back to the chat entity. In this case, we're gonna be linking back to the chat. So every message will have a chat property. So if you want to fetch all the messages for a chat, you simply have to do a query where the chat property equals the chat dot underscore ID or whatever the case might be. So back in our message.js file, what we could do in here is we can create a chat property and link it back to the chat. This would be really easy. There's no extra work to do here. This would be a really simple query to do. But in reality, I don't think we ever need to fetch the chat for a message. I think it's much more common to be fetching messages for a given chat. And that's why we're gonna keep that messages property instead. From there, let's go back to index. So we're gonna pull in a few more files. So let's actually import chat from chat. Let's do another one for the message. Just gonna keep them in the alphabetic order. So let's pull in the root, chat, the message. Now we can go back to the user. So for the user, we're going to add chats. So we'll have an array of chats like this. And what I think we can also do is we can add the updated add property, which we can get for free because it's already on the model. So let's save that. And now back to our models directory, let's go ahead and create a few more models. So I'll create one for chat and let's also add one for a message. On the same note, let's actually go back to the user model. So in the user model, let's add the chat property. So this one is gonna be an array of objects and every object is going to be of type object ID. So this object ID, we can actually grab from a schema. So actually let me import schema along with mongoose. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna reference schema.types dot object ID. So this will give us the reference to the object ID. And the reference is going to be to the chat model, which we're about to create. And on the same note, I left a few notes about security and specifically talking about sanitization. What I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just take out the value for now. Let's simplify it a bit. We're just going to say email has already been taken. The same thing for the username. Of course, we can actually come back to it in the future, but I think for the time being, let's just not complicate it any further. I'm going to do the same thing for the sanitization in here. So I'm just going to say user ID is not a valid object ID. So we don't have to worry about sanitization anymore. That should basically be it. So once we have the chats, we can actually go back to the chat model. So let's do models slash chat. So in here, let's copy some of these things in here. So I'm going to copy the import in here. We're going to create a constant. Let's call it chat schema. So we're going to new up the schema. We'll pass in the object with the field. The last one will be timestamps set to true. So let's take a look at the schema file. So we're going to have a few fields. So we'll have title, users, last message. Let's add all those. So the title will be a string. Users will be an array. The type will be schema.types.objectid. The reference will be back to the user model. The last message will be an object. I'll copy the one from the users. So this will be an object ID, but in this case, it'll be not an array, but just an object ID reference. And this will reference back to the message. Let me put in a missing comma. In fact, what we can also do is we can destructure the object ID. So let me take it out of schema.types. So we can simplify the code a bit. And finally, what we can do is we can do an export default of mongoose.model. So we'll call it chat. We'll pass in the chat schema as the second argument. Next up, let's go to the message model. So in here, I'm just gonna copy everything from chat. So this will be a message schema. We'll pass in the schema to the model method. We'll call it a message. And now let's see, let's go back to our schema. So for the message, we'll have a body, a sender, and a chat. So now the body will be a string, the sender, once again, an object type object ID, and the reference will be to user. We could of course call it user to be more generic. And this is going to be in keeping with the same verbiage. Let's say user model, the user property, the user reference, but it makes sense to call it sender in this case. And this would be more precise because we're specifically targeting the sender of that message. And the same thing, of course, for the chat. Once again, the sender property could also be called sender ID. But later on, we're going to be requiring or loading the sender for a message. So it's going to make more sense to call it sender down the road. So let's just keep it as sender and chat. 
even though for a fact we know that we're not embedding documents, once again, these are simply object ID references. So the chat reference will be chat like this. And with that, let's go to index in the models directory. So we're going to have two new models. So we're going to export default as chat from chat. And let's have one for the message. So we'll export message. And this one will be lowercase like this. Now, if we go back to the terminal, if we try to start the application, we might run into issues with the schema import from Mongoose. Now, all we have to do is we basically need to update Mongoose because if you do yarn outdate it, you're going to see that Mongoose is behind. So now I'm just going to do yarn add Mongoose to re-add it. So it's going to bump up the version as well. And with that, let's do yarn dev again. And this should start the server. So as you can see, now we don't have any issues. I'm going to stop it for a second and we're going to continue with the resolvers in the next video. So I'm going to see you then. Take care.